Table Rock Lake is nestled in the scenic Ozark Mountain region of southwest Missouri and northwest Arkansas. The lake covers more than 60,000 acres and has 742 miles of shoreline. The Army Corps of Engineers began construction of the dam in 1954 to reduce flooding for those living downstream. The dam was completed in 1958. The powerhouse and switchyard, which provides clean, renewable electricity, was completed in 1959. In March of 1960, the parks were open to the public. The lake is best known for its recreational opportunities. Many locals believe the recreational opportunities are as varied as the Ozark Mountain terrain that surrounds it. Visitors from across the country believe this to be true as well. There are 26 public use areas around the lake. 14 parks and 8 public use areas are presently managed by the Corps, with 8 of those operated by the Ozark Rivers Heritage Foundation through a partnership agreement. The U.S. Forest Service and Missouri Department of Natural Resources each operate one park. The City of Beaver in Arkansas and the Port of Kimberling in Missouri each operate one park. The master plan was first created in 1956. It's the strategic document that guides the comprehensive management and development of recreational, natural, and cultural resources. The last revision was completed in 1976. The master plan is not intended to address the specifics of regional water quality, shoreline management, or water level management. These areas are addressed in separate management plans. After the master plan revision is finalized, we will lift the moratorium we now have on shoreline management requests. Once funding is available, we will update the shoreline management plan to reflect the changes from this master plan revision. No single agency has total oversight of the lake. Also, no two visitors share the same vision of how the lake should look in 20 years, but we believe all have its best interests at heart. During the process of updating the master plan, the Corps' intent has been to interact with as many people as possible to focus on the common goal of the lake's sustainability. To begin the process, the Corps invited more than 18,000 people to attend public workshops to express their future vision of the lake. More than 2,000 attended workshops in their areas, and during the 30-day comment period, approximately 615 comments were received and reviewed. From those comments, we identified the public's three major concerns, water quality, safety, and recreation. With these three concerns identified, we developed a preliminary draft master plan and used three focus groups to discuss those topics and help refine our preferred alternative to best manage the area for future generations. These focus groups were made up of community leaders, business owners, realtors, visitors, and representatives from various local, state, and federal agencies. We now have our preferred version of the draft master plan and the alternatives that we considered. We ask you to look at this draft, remembering that the most important part of the master plan is the land classifications. We need you to look at the definition of the land classifications so you can better understand the changes that we are proposing. Once more, we will be taking comments from you so that we can determine if we need to refine the plan. We want to make it the best possible mix for the future of the lake. So let's go through the land classifications, what they mean, and how the updates change the current plan. We have five major land classifications, project operations, high density recreation, mitigation, environmentally sensitive, and multiple resource management lands. Project operations are those lands used solely for the operation of the lake. This includes those areas required for the dam, spillway, switchyard, levees, dikes, offices, and maintenance facilities. High density recreation lands are currently planned or could be developed in the future for high use recreational activities for the visiting public. This may include day use areas and or campgrounds as well as areas for commercial business on project lands such as fuel service and boat rentals. Mitigation land was acquired specifically for the purposes of offsetting losses associated with development of the project area. There are currently no lands classified as mitigation land. Environmentally sensitive land is where scientific, ecological, cultural, or aesthetic features have been identified and must not be negatively impacted. Currently, little or no public use is allowed on these lands, but some permits could be issued for unimproved walking paths, erosion control, and removal of invasive species. No agricultural, grazing, or mowing are permitted in this area at this time. The multiple resource management classification allows for a particular use but has the potential for other uses on these lands. 
These are broken down into the following. Low density recreation includes lands with little development that could support passive public use like primitive camping, fishing, hunting, trails, wildlife viewing, shoreline use permits, and more. In the shoreline management plan, this area could include zoning for limited development areas like resort docks, boat docks, and other shoreline uses. Wildlife management land is designated for stewardship of fish and wildlife resources. Activities on these lands could include food plots and hunting. Vegetative management land provides stewardship of forest, prairie, and other native vegetative cover to act as a filter between land and lake. Homeowners must work with us on activities such as tree trimming, cutting of cedar trees, and replanting of native shrubs and grasses on project lands. Future or inactive recreation areas have potential for future recreational development or are areas that are closed. Until there is an opportunity to develop or reopen these areas, they will be managed for multiple resources. The lake has no land areas in this classification. We've also added water surface classifications to this updated master plan. This will help address the safety concerns on Table Rock Lake. Restricted surface waters are for project operations, safety, and security purposes. Designated no wake areas help to protect environmentally sensitive areas from disturbance, as well as accesses for the public, in addition to public safety. The Missouri State Highway Patrol currently administers no wake buoys around the lake. With this in mind, we currently do not use this designation on the lake. Fish and wildlife sanctuary areas are where annual or seasonal restrictions are in place to protect fish and wildlife species during migration, resting, feeding, nesting, or spawning. During this revision, no areas currently met this designation. Therefore, we did not use this classification on Table Rock Lake. Open recreation areas are waters available for seasonal as well as year-round water-based recreation. In addition to land and water classifications, easements on lands around the lake are very important. Easements were acquired for specific purposes and do not convey the same rights or ownership to the Corps as other lands. Operations easement. We retain rights to these lands necessary for project operations. Flowage easement. We retain the right to inundate these lands for project operations, such as a high water event. Conservation easement. We retain the rights to lands for aesthetic, recreation, and environmental benefits. There are currently no lands like this on the lake. Now that we've covered the land and water classifications, let's look at the draft master plan that has been written for a balanced use alternative. It increased the high density recreation to 1,986 acres. The low density lands total 7,190 acres. A vegetative management area consists of 4,081 acres. In response to the public's feedback to keep the lake natural and scenic, environmentally sensitive lands will increase by 2,236 acres to a total of 4,639 acres. The majority of this land was acquired from the U.S. Forest Service. Project operations lands would decrease by 161 acres, which were reclassified to high density recreation. This leaves 232 acres for project operations. Wildlife management acres will increase to 3,252 acres. The bulk of this increase was from adding the Cow Creek area of the lake. The other alternatives considered in development of this draft master plan are the no action, conservative, and high development. The no action alternative would not reclassify any of the 19,539 acres of available land for uses that differ from the current land classifications. Lands that are not currently classified would remain unclassified and would total 4,492 acres. In addition, there would not be a vegetative management classification. The impacts in this alternative could allow for continued development of 4,492 acres not currently classified. There would not be a 50-foot area acting as a buffer between land and lake, and a smaller wildlife management area would mean less access to potential public hunting areas. However, resource management practices would continue around the lake. Visitors as well as residents at the lake might be exposed to health risks associated with water quality issues. The conservative alternative provides for about 2,000 acres to remain as high-density recreation, but reclassifies all 14,146 acres of low-density recreation to environmentally sensitive lands. This would also mean no further development or growth around the lake. 
This alternative was developed in response to comments received about not wanting Table Rock to become another leg of the Ozarks and preservation of existing water quality for future users. Under this alternative, existing shoreline use permits would be grandfathered and no new permits would be issued. A decrease in the level of economic growth would be expected. Over time, the water quality could improve or degrade because of a depressed economic environment. The water-based activities could be adversely impacted, but an increase could occur in land-based recreational opportunities, such as hiking, hunting, or wildlife observation. The high development alternative would designate around 2,000 acres to high density recreation and reclassify all environmentally sensitive lands to low density recreation. This means that 14,066 acres of low density recreation could be available for development. However, the 50 foot vegetative management land to lake area would still be required on 3,915 acres within low density recreation. Under this alternative, the only exception to development would be in areas where known cultural resource sites or endangered species habitats are located. Of course, this would mean a potential increase in economic growth because of the increased development and visitation. Water quality would decrease because of increased development and visitation. We also looked at four versions of our preferred balanced use alternative. Slow growth. This alternative focuses on platted subdivisions with at least half of adjacent lots developed with homes. These areas were originally considered environmentally sensitive because they lacked the proper vegetation modification permits that homeowners could obtain under low density classifications. Residents in these areas have mowed core lands without permits, so this alternative is designed to keep the residents in compliance with the shoreline management plan permitting process. There are 22 areas around the lake that fall in this category. Low density lands will increase to 7,422 acres, while environmentally sensitive lands will decrease to 6,644 acres. This represents a 232 acre shift in these land classifications. There is a concern that slow development over time could eventually lead to the public's perception that the lake will become the next Lake of the Ozarks. But, Increased recreational opportunities from low and high density areas could lead to the better health of the general public, or it could expose the population to more health risks associated with water quality issues. Maintain high density. Under this alternative, 74 acres would remain as high density. If an interested entity partners with us to manage these lands, then the areas could be developed. These include James River Park, Swiss Villa, Christ in Youth, Jellystone, Sunset Cove, and Kimberling Cove Resort. Impacts from this alternative would be similar to those experienced under slow growth. No new high density. Under this alternative, commercial development around the lake would be limited. 95 acres of land would not convert from low density and environmentally sensitive areas to high density. This includes Dogwood Canyon, Stonecroft Property, Paradise Point, Outdoor Academy, Kimberling City, Stillwaters, and Big Cedar Resort. Lands classified as low density, environmentally sensitive would still have potential for future development but with limited recreational activities. This alternative could have a negative economic impact on existing destination resorts that have expressed a desire to expand. No vegetative management area. This alternative eliminates the 50 foot land to lake vegetative management area around the lake. With this alternative, mowing on government land could result in more pesticide and sediment runoff. This could expose visitors as well as residents to more health risks associated with water quality issues. Uh, I first became involved in the master plan process um, during the initial public meetings and then sat through a series of focus groups dealing with recreation and what I learned was it is a really complex process and it's very difficult to look into your crystal ball and try to determine what you want Table Rock Lake to look like in 20 years. Uh, but I really appreciate the Corps' willingness to listen to the public uh, to ask for input and to take those recommendations and try to implement them in the master plan because I think the 
product will be far better with uh, taking in, into account the local people's recommendations. As a resident of Branson for more than 40 years, um, Table Rock Lake is really important to me. And what I would like for it to look like in 20 years is um, not a whole lot different than what it looks like now. Um, that's probably unrealistic. Growth will happen. But I think if we take a balanced approach to growth and uh, protecting our natural environment, uh, we'll all be better for it. Um, one thing I love about Table Rock Lake is the shoreline is not dotted with, with docks and development. And the Corps really does a good job of uh, protecting our environment while trying to balance um, growth. My team at the Little Rock District, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, has worked hard on preparing a draft master plan and environmental assessment. I encourage you to read the materials available, ask questions, and make comments. We're asking all of you to continue to be a part of this process and help us in completing this master plan revision. The public review period on this revision runs now through the 30th of August. During this time, I encourage you to provide your input at our public open houses or through comment cards or letters sent by mail, email, or fax. Once we have all the comments, the team will reconvene to review and process all of your input. The district plans to release the revised master plan in December. We'll hold more open houses when we do to ensure you understand how this plan will impact you and the lake. Thank you for your continued involvement. Your input is important to the future of Table Rock Lake.